I love you. Oh, the kids. They ruin everything. They ruin it all, man. Welcome back to the couch. Potatoes. I am the green traveler from Gorsh. And I am the faceless Leon. Welcome to Green and Faceless on the Couch, a podcast about movies and TV. Woo, woo. This is the potato pick. Beep, 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 uh, beep, we're beep. a week late. We usually put this out the first Thursday yeah. of the month. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's how we do it. Shit and got real. We've did. already talked about it. If you watched our last uh, Disney episode, which was yeah. Beauty and the Beast. Uh, I don't know if people actually, you know, like how people watch these, if they watch them as they come out or if they wait until there's like a full playlist and just blast through it. Like, well, it's very interesting. I hope they're not waiting for a full playlist on know, right? the Disney. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be, well, we're almost there. Yeah. The next year we'll probably true. be done with it. Yeah. That's I was looking, true. I was looking at, because uh, right now we're doing the Renaissance era and I was looking at what ends it, which is Tarzan. And I was just like, Tarzan, man, that's so weird that that's the end. And I was just like, oh, my God, we're almost there. <laughs> we're 20 years away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. The potato pig. If you, if, yeah, if you'd listen to the, that Beauty and the Beast episode, I was kidnapped by the government. That's right. Um, yeah. Uh, we had to. We are in Idaho now. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Well, the government. We're in Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> we're on the move, baby. Yeah. No, we're not. We're, we're tracked by the government. They got me on, they got they, me on lockdown, yeah, they, man. Yeah, they caught up with us. Dark Brandon and, found me. Yeah, Dark Brandon. <laughs> Dark Brandon? <laughs> Have you not heard that? Dark no. Brandon? Oh, my God. Well, you know how everybody was like calling Joe Biden Brandon because of oh. the... Did you hear about that? Like, no. a long time ago, there was a rally or something, and people were yelling, fuck Joe Biden. And, like, uh, I can't remember if it was a reporter or a newscaster or whatever, but somebody in the media was just like, I, I think they're yelling, let's go, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> and so now that's, that's just become a rallying cry of the conservatives is, like, instead of saying let's fuck Joe Biden, Brandon. they'll say, well, let's go, Brandon. It's just like, all right, okay, guys, we get you. Um, but ever since, he, you know, he had the, a lot of those accomplishments, like many, you know, a couple of months going on in a row, he was passing shit and doing things. Right. And people were like, it's dark, Brandon, here he comes. You know, he's like, he's having his moment. Hold on, I'll find the meme for you. It's really hilarious. A dark Brandon shirt. Here we go. Hell yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is my favorite with the, with the laser eyes. It's <laughs> just pretty like, good. It's so good. <laughs> Dark wow. Brandon, no more malarkey. <laughs> oh my goodness, old oh people boy. are funny. But yeah, we're on to the potato pick. This one technically comes from Gage. Gage was lazy and forgot. I'm gonna put him on burn. Right <laughs> oh here. my god! Yeah. Yeah, I know he's gonna, really? Are. I know he's gonna listen to this one. He was lazy. He forgot to put in his suggestion, but he kept telling me that he knew he wanted to, us to do the Polar Express. He was trying to, to be fair to Gage. He's trying to come up with other suggestions exactly. to go along with yeah, it. Yeah. But finally, we were like, look, we can just deep dive the Polar Express. Yeah, exactly. And he still didn't put the <laughs> suggestion in. So I put the suggestion in for him. It won. We're yeah. here. Here we are, Gage. Thank you, Gage. This is one of his favorite movies, and I'm going to do everything I can to not shit on it. I swear. I promise to you. That's uh, Yeah. I got a mustache hair, like intertwangling with my non-existent nose hair oh yeah yeah it really tickles that's always the worst that's why yeah. i just went complete shave i was just like i, I had denial beard going yeah. on and uh, i really enjoyed my beard i do i do i still do enjoy it i do miss it a little bit but i will say that after having it gone there's less food or less hair in my food, <laughs> which is really nice. Yeah. There's a lot less cleanup when I'm eating. Like mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about like getting all yeah. the spillage out and everything. Yeah. Oh, it's my, nice. My beard is completely unkempt and 100% psychic energy. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it, it does trap food in there. You get surprised. <laughs> it's just, it's a black just hole, the man. just the it, it just traps the psychic essence of the food. It was really annoying. Like I would trim it so that the the mustache, like your mustache right now, goes over where your mouth would be. Oh yeah, like it, it, where like, it would be yeah. exactly. And like I I could not stand that. I would take a bite and all it would be would be mustache hair. I would like pull it and like eat it and be like ah oh, <laughs> damn. Oh, God so I would always damn. trim it. I would trim it so that I could eat things. Yeah. But then, and like even with it trimmed, 
it still managed its way into every single meal. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't understand it. It was, it was, I, it just wasn't meant for me. Well, when I eat, I just turn my hand into a Hoover vacuum. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it just cycles all there. Oh. oh my goodness. Uh, that reminds me of the Polar Express. Yeah, it does it. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a vacuum, doesn't it? it like a little, little bit. Kind of, kind of, kind of. It looks more uh, like a train. Young child who fucks everything up. What's his name? Uh, Hero uh, Boy? I guess Hero Is Boy. Hero B- Billy the Lonely Boy? He didn't do that. He wasn't the main character, was he? Well, he was the adult voice of him. The adult voice of... Oh, uh, now I'm reading it. There yeah. you go. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have Hero Boy. God, what a beautiful name. It, it, played by... Uh, voiced by Josh Hutcherson, who did additional motion capture. If you've never watched um, Polar Express, it's all in CGI animation. Yeah. Uh, let's see uh, what specifically... It was, I remember it, was it being cap. like the first like really big movie that was all CGI. Castle Rock Entertainment's first CGI film. <clears throat> Well, there you go. Oh, my God. Robert Zemeckis really wanted to go for it, and he, really he did. did. And, yeah. oh, everybody, my God. Everybody acted out the film, and then he took out everybody's performance and replaced <laughs> it with an animation of everybody's performance. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's a weird choice, and it's 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 a lot. A lot uh, we talked um, Chippendale Rescue Rangers oh, right. earlier where they made fun of the the uncanny valiness yes. of this movie. Of this era. Of this era. Yeah. That's fair. Specifically of this movie, they did they did yeah. name drop this film, and it's very true because characters just stare off into space it's to nothing. Yeah, people are not. Sometimes looking at they're looking at you instead of looking at. The other <laughs> yeah, they're just staring right into the lens. <laughs> and they're like, I'm not sure Tom Hanks was really looking right into the camera. He's a pretty good actor. <laughs> pretty sure he was hitting his cue just it's right. Like, sometimes, like the also like the the eyes and the eyelids clip. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, very it's disturbing. Very disturbing. <laughs> but hero oh boy. The worst part of it, though. Okay, since we're on the CGI, before yeah, we move yeah. on, the worst part was the hot cocoa scene. Like they tried so hard with the coordination of yeah. that, but everybody looks so robotic for one. Was that when everybody and, was dancing? Yeah, everyone okay. was dancing yeah. on the train, and yeah. the hot cocoa was literally flying yeah. through the air into. Now cups but it doesn't look like hot cocoa flying there it looks yeah. like giant blobs of shit <laughs> <laughs> really it really did it does and it then really they ca- clap capture in these cups and they drink it and they got this big old shit mustache it's hilarious man yeah i it's, love it that part to me was honestly it's, disturbing it is disturbing and the reason i feel like the reason they were robotic looking was because obviously they didn't have that mo capped like because right. you can't have that kind of crazy too, fantasy, yeah. fantasy scene yeah so it was it was probably mostly cgi and just like you know animators trying to be like now how would their body look <laughs> and then trying to get that action to their version of the animation are using and be like hmm, hmm. this is all right i hmm. guess but speed it up a little bit make it a little more blurry they won't notice yeah. it yeah oh, dude the elves oh my god we'll get there we'll get there hero boy josh hutcherson uh, doesn't he doesn't believe he doesn't he does believe in Santa? He, he, he does questioning. He's questioning. He is having a crisis of faith. A mid youth crisis. A mid youth crisis. Is Santa real? Yeah, people at school are telling him no way, Jose could uh-uh. happen for these X amount of reasons, Mm-mm. and he starts collecting these reasons. He's really investigating. He's it. a smart kid. He is, and uh, he tells. He also is putting doubt in his his sister's One mind. Ass. Yeah, I watched this show on Nexium about Nexium. You know about Nexium, the the cult. Nope. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> anyhow, at one point, I just wanted to mention they do this handshake. I think it's the it's either the conductor in Hero Boy. Or Santa Claus and Hero Boy, but they do this handshake that is the secret handshake for next. Oh shit! And it was yeah. We were watching this right when that happened, and it's in the right time frame. Oh my god! And he had uh, the guy, the leader, had some movie makers in the cult specifically because Robert Zemeckis. Maybe? No, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Tom but Hanks. It, the, the cult was disguised as a self improvement. 
Oh, okay. Corporation. Christianity. No. <laughs> Alcoholics they have, Anonymous. They didn't really have anything branded with God in it, but the leader did have them call him Vanguard. Nice. <laughs> that's pretty rad. I will talk more about this show in Bangers and Hash. So Bangers a, and Hash. That's a, a look forward. Bangers and Hash. So anyhow, it, yeah, I was like, all of a sudden, I was looking for like signs of this Nexium yeah. uh, cult, but Trying that was the it. only thing I saw. But, Dang it. Yeah. That would have been hilarious. However, there is a lot of like, hey, you just have to have faith that this is working. It's yeah. hard right now, but it's working. Right. And this movie is all about like, you just have to keep the faith. <laughs> you just gotta believe, You just man. gotta believe you just and gotta. Santa will be real. You can hear the bell. We'll get to that. You'll hear the bell. First he hears <laughs> the choo-choo of a Polar Express yeah, that's train. That's right. And he hops aboard because it shows up. It's vo- uh, the 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 what do you call him? The conductor. That's right. He he gets off. He's Tom Hanks, very young, That's dapper right. mustache, looking really hot in his <laughs> creepy animation. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he gets out and he's just like, gotta get on the polar train. And he clips everybody. I forgot about that. He has a little paper clip. Yeah. He's super fast with it. Yeah. And I just like I really wanted. Real proud. I, I really wish that like Tom Hanks was actually doing that because it's like it, yeah. it was such it would be so funny. It, it was that bit was pretty funny with the animation because the whole punches would flop up yeah, into yeah. your mouth and they go. Pff, yeah, flop. yeah. <laughs> I love his reactions and get yeah, it's so funny. I really enjoyed it. That, those were fun parts. He you know he clips. I think two letters into everybody's yeah. ticket mm-hmm. everybody that everybody gets. But when they get on the train, Hero Boy accidentally loses Hero Girl's ticket. Mm-hmm. And it's the dumbest scene ever, honestly. I'm so sorry, Gage, but it is it's a really dumb it's scene. It's a pretty dumb scene. Yeah. The, the ticket, like, through a, a weird, weird, random, a lot of stuff that we don't really need to get into, the ticket ends up going outside of the train. You know, goes through the door, it flutters in the sky, he's picked up by an eagle, taken to its eaglets. And then something happens there where he gets dropped off somewhere else and it falls and like i remember there's like there's a snow there's a snowball like i don't remember if the if the the ticket itself becomes a snowball or something it's but something like something that. happens and, and it's then just the rolling. snowball crashes in the it, yeah it goes down it goes over a ramp flies up and it crashes and the tickets back in the wind gets blown right back to the train yeah. it's like a two minute sequence going outside of the train and by the end of it I mean, I wasn't impressed by the animation. It looked very, you know, very just... <laughs> right. I would I say at the time, it probably, maybe if we're critics at the time, we might have said, hey, I like what they were trying to do yeah. here with this new technology, but I, I remember, also don't like it. <laughs> I remember watching it as a kid and not being impressed. Yeah, I do too. I liked, I still liked the... 2D animation. I thought yeah. it was better. I really it did really too. It really just this, was yeah. at the time. Yeah, I thought this looked like garbage when I was a kid. Uh, it doesn't look as bad as I remembered it. I would agree with that. Yeah. I would agree with that statement. Um, but I, I didn't dislike this movie. No, no. Growing up. I thought I thought it was, you know, a decent tale. Yeah. About, uh, uh, it was, but it is a pretty average Christmas movie. I would it say it really is, and I felt I, I don't know. It's just, there, there are moments like that though, with that ticket scene and everything, where it's like this didn't need to be here. Yeah, it was just a fit, like a fun, exciting like scene to to like get a little bit of action, to hype the kids up or something. I don't know to to feel like it's moving. Right. But in reality, nothing happens. The ticket came right back to the square one, mm-hmm. and then they repeated the exact same scene that happened it's before like, it. it. Yeah, it's a little bit of fluff, for yeah. sure. Yeah, he loses the ticket again. Yeah, well, I mean, like, well, I mean, he, 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 like, he has the ticket. He's trying to cross to another car with the ticket, and that's when he loses the ticket. And then he like right. comes back. He's that's, like, I failed. That's when he meets the ghost hobo, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> also voiced by Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Yeah, everybody is played by Tom Hanks. Well, here's unless the they're played by Michael uh, Jetter. <laughs> right. Well, here's the thing: is um, <coughs> uh, Tom Hanks has wanted to make this movie for a long time. Like oh. he he read the book. Who what's, who who did the book? Chris Van Allsburg, nineteen eighty five book. I don't remember when Tom Hanks like when it came into his world of wanting to do this, but he eventually was like, I want to make this movie. I want to play everybody. And <laughs> and Robert Zemeckis was like one of his friends. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think I've mentioned before, there was the uh, he was supposed to be in. I think he was supposed to be in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. 
Tom Hanks was, he was offered a role and he turned it down. And then after having turned that down, he's like, I am never turning down another role that comes to me from Robert Zemeckis. Yeah. And that's why he's been in every single Robert Zemeckis movie since. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, he, he like got Robert Zemeckis hooked on this idea of making this movie. And Robert Zemeckis was like, yes, you will play everybody. <laughs> and after a while, I can't remember how long into the process, they were just like, okay, it's too taxing on Tom Hanks to yeah. play literally every single character. <laughs> yeah. So they cut it down to just like eight roles, you know? Yeah, it's still every pivotal male role. <laughs> yeah. Hero boy, the adult voice. Hero boy's father, conductor, hobo, Santa Claus, and the Ebenezer Scrooge puppet. Yeah. But not That's another scene that didn't need to happen. Smokey and Steamer, who are <laughs> the poops left behind. <laughs> uh, well, Michael Jetter plays these two people who work on the train. Yeah. And um, so one of them ha- is like fat and bald and stout and the other one's long and lanky and has yeah. a beard that goes down to his oh, feet long ass beard yeah it, <laughs> and he, he also has a screech of a, of a yes. train howl yeah, so. Yeah. so like uh eventually they have to stop because there's a herd of caribou on the tracks <laughs> and uh they pull on the long bearded character's face to make him make these wailing sounds and it somehow communicates to the herd that it's time to go it's, yeah, yeah they're just like oh yeah sorry we're in the way we'll, we'll get out of the way here <laughs> so silly i love that Th- that's the kind of stuff i enjoyed about this movie yeah is, it could have been more of that yeah, yeah there's know? a lot of fluff like the the ticket scene's silly and a lot of like other stuff is silly but it like it it really does just imply that it's all one big dream Mm, you yeah, know, there's a there's bit. a lot of elements that that imply that it's a dream, and what I really enjoy about it is that kind of silliness, like because the kids just moving. It does have like a, that dreamlike feel of just going from place to place. Like he's always on the train, mm. but he's like on top of the train. He's crossing. And it's just like it's a long trek through the snow. It's ridiculous. Right. There's a lot of events that happen there, and then when they get to the front of the train, there's a lot of shit that happens. Yeah, and like. I enjoyed the caribou stuff, and I enjoyed those like the scenes with with Smokey and Steamer, because they really do just feel like dream characters. They do you know? feel like dream. They they feel like Morpheus made them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. So, anyhow, on the train, uh, they're on the way to the North Pole. If we didn't. Oh that. yeah, yeah. The, the, the Polar Express means that they're going to the North Pole. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> They, they're going to go and meet Santa, and the idea is that one of these kids, there's several kids on the train, yeah, by yeah. the way, only a few of them matter, but... Two. Yeah. Um, Three, I guess. There's the one nerdy kid. The know-it-all. Oh, you? yeah. Uh, oh, his name's actually he, know-it-all. It is actually yeah, Eddie Dezine. And um, the lonely kid, that oh face. my god, they got, they made that kid actually look like him. <laughs> Eddie Dezine is Except the uh, for blonde. the nerd from Greece and Greece too. If you ever oh, if you God. watch those, no, I did he does not the voice know. of Know It All in in Polar Express. Uh, so Billy, the lonely boy, he's the only one who gets. <laughs> oh yeah, name. I kept. I always thought that that was uh, Haley Joel Osment. Oh, did you? Because it looks doesn't it, it kind of does look, look, like look like him? It's played by Peter uh, Scolari. And then the other character that matters is uh, Hero Girl, played by uh, Nona Gay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so stupid. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, going back to Michael Jeter, I did read this little caption. Uh, he did yeah. He did die the year before the film was released, and the film is dedicated to his that memory. Is, that is sad. So I, I'm still going to keep my uh, Smokey and Steamer being <laughs> two shits left behind, but... <laughs> <laughs> so what? Else, what? Else, so this movie we talked about the animation. Talked about talked the animation. To, we talked about where they're going. Ghost and Hobo. Things that happen. Tom uh, Hanks. Eventually, the tracks go under this lake. Yeah, for it's, some it's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah it's and weird. So they're just skidding across the ice, yeah, and the know-it-all apart. kids like trains can't go on ice. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> stupid! This is a dumb part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand your dreams. It makes no sense. Oh man, 
Uh, and they somehow very magically get back on the tracks. Yeah, but it's nice though. Yeah, I enjoy yeah, it. It's I it's tense. That. It's tense. It it's exciting. The animation is decent there. Like, I think I was more watch tense watching that scene as an adult than I ever yeah. was as a kid because I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> "Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> that yeah, I think train I, is gonna crash!" I think I had checked out as a kid, but now as an adult, like I, I was, I was. This time around, I was more compelled by the dream idea sure. because as I was going along, I was more like, okay, I'm starting to understand more that I think this is just a dream. Right. That it's all happening in this kid's head um, and he's going to wake up and be like, I believe in Santa Claus, you know, <laughs> and, and there will be like one thing that will be like, was it a dream? Was you know, it? Was, it, was it all along? Like, you know, the inception when the top, the top kind of like fumbles oh. a bit and it's like, <gasps> you know, and, and there's moments oh, of that at the but end. you can still hear the bell. That's true, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like at the end, he he. Ha- there's moments like that where he can hear the bell, but the at the very beginning of the movie, he rips his coat pocket with his marbles in it, uh, and at the very end of the movie, that's fine. There's no hole there anymore. His marbles are still there. He actually. But that's how he, he actually, lost the ticket. Though, he actually too. wakes up and rips it again on the exact same bedpost at the end. So it's just like that's so weird. But that's also where the bell fell out. So the whole dream, it was there. But when he right. woke up, it wasn't, is what you're saying. Exactly. He, I mean, and at the beginning of his dream, at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, of the movie. Yeah, yeah, when he wakes up, or when he when he hears the Polar Express, he grabs his coat, and it rips on his bedpost, and his marbles go everywhere. And that, as you say, that as you mentioned, that's how he lost his ticket. It was because he put the ticket in, the, in yeah. the hole of his pocket, and it fell out. And at the very end, when he wakes up after having come back from the North Pole... He, w- he rips it again on the bedpost, his, his coat. He go- grabs his coat and it rips on the bedpost and his marbles go everywhere. And I'm just huh. like, okay, I get it. It was probably a dream, but he can hear the bell at the end. Uh-huh. So yeah. maybe it was real. Maybe. The spirit of Christmas. So let's talk about the North Pole. Maybe we should talk about the North Pole. Let's look at the, how much time we got. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's, let me get back here real quick. We're at 22, <laughs> 22 minutes in. Let's let's take a quick soda pop break. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about the North Pole. And, and all Santa the Claus! Yeah, all its majesty. Yay. Yay. And bad lessons and messages all. <laughs> I love you. What? I think we gotta do something else. What do you mean? <coughs> Why can't we be back on that? Why can't we, we could be back on that? On what you just said. On what I said? Yeah. On us not being back on that. Okay. And now everybody has to, everybody's got to be like, well, that's fucking bullshit. Now we don't <laughs> know what they're back on. Yeah. It was racist. You, w- Welcome back to the Polar Express <sighs> Part 2. I mean, just We're because in. you are technically a superior race. <laughs> a superior <laughs> race. Huh? That's what you guys say. Huh? I'm a minority on this planet, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, the Polar Express, North Pole, Santa Claus, uh, not and racist. A little racist, <coughs> you think? Probably. Oh, I'm yeah. sure there's some kind of weird. Yeah, smoke another one, bud. <laughs> You're smoking your packs of ciggies. <laughs> he doesn't smoke cigarettes. Quit. Don't smoke cigs, kids. Don't smoke skids, kids. Skid. Don't smoke kids, cigs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> no, this fucking kid ruins everything. Like literally, he does the this. Uh, kid yeah, no, the no, the main, kid. the hero kid, hero boy. Yeah, he does, but I think it's all part of the the plan. Yeah, but part I mean, of the Santa plan. They get the, okay. I guess maybe it's it's yeah. fucking it's ridiculous. Is all it is. It's a dream. Um, <laughs> it's a dream. <laughs> it's a dream. <laughs> no, they get to the North Pole and he fucks it all up. You know, like they're what is it? One of them's gonna get a gift or something. Yeah, one of the kids on the train are gonna get a gift yeah. from Santa. They're going to get the first gift of Christmas. Oh my goodness, what an honor. Yeah. And and you know, they get there, they see Santa, uh, they don't see Santa yet. They get there and he fucks up something immediately and gets them gets him and the uh, the know-it-all kid and so hero girl. The lonely boy. Lonely boy. Alone in his room. That's right. I forgot about him. He doesn't want to go. He doesn't know. He doesn't Christmas is He suck. believes in Santa Claus. Yeah. But Christmas sucks for him because his dad never comes home. How sad. Yeah. It really is yeah, sad. It is sad. And I think his fun. mom also works probably during the holiday because she's a single mom. And yeah. She have to work. And America's silly. And I, yeah. 
Yeah. I remember I remember working at retail stores and people coming in on holidays and be like, it sucks that you guys are open. This still happens at, yeah. at the bank where I work at, too, where people are like, it sucks that you guys are open. It's like, well, if you weren't fucking here, I wouldn't be. Yeah. If there was no traffic on this day, eventually the business would be like, we're fucking wasting money being That's open right. on this holiday and we'll yeah. shut down. But here you fucking are. <laughs> here you are buying your can of peaches. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, is it worth it? your big TV. In your big TV. It's the hot take. Capitalism is silly. Capitalism is a bit silly, man. And and, and when it comes to uh, that kind of shit, too, specifically Americans going places, we don't have to have small talk. You know, no. when, you, when you come into my bank or, or to, to see me, and it's very obvious that I just want to get the transaction done and get uh. back to my book and get you out of my face... Don't tell me how the weather is outside. I'm stuck inside. I don't care how the weather is outside. When I go outside, I'll look up the weather on my phone because I got that. This is just so contrary to my personality, though. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't stand it when people come in and they tell me, man, it's cold outside. I get that. Oh, my bad. Oh, everything's going wrong. Everything's happening. <laughs> but it's just like, it, it's, it bothers me, man. It really does bother me. And I don't remember how I got here from Polar Express. I, um, duh. It's gone I, now. The lonely boy was lonely alone. Boy, he was alone. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The mom might have been working in oh, retail. Oh, yeah, that's I right. That's got right. there. We're good at this. Yeah. And yeah. the lonely boy, he... Well, anyhow, the hero children, yeah. the boy and girl, they're like, hey, let's try to get him to come with us. And I guess they... The rest of the group left without them, and they try to find them. I can't remember. I know they get they get lost. They, they get, get separated. Lost. They go into the deep inner works of the of North Pole. Yeah, and they, all the tiny buildings. And they become presents. All like. the buildings are built for the elves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But <laughs> Santa also lives there. And the elves like, are like, they're like two foot five or something like yeah. that, but super thin. And yeah, very high pitched yeah. voices, very typical yeah. stuff that you would yeah. expect. And But it's I think it's weirder because of the three D animation. It is weird and it's also it's also weird because the kids immediately go into sleuth mode, like to play in D and D and they're yeah. about to like sneak up on a, a pack of wolves <laughs> or something to kill. You know, because it's just like they're just spying on the elves and they're like, what's going on? Oh my god, the elves are over there. They're, built, they're doing yeah. stuff. They're getting prepared for this thing. Also, I like half of the elves are Jewish, too. I swear. <laughs> they say like Meshugana and stuff like that. <laughs> and, I, I completely forgot about that. I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> it's I didn't so catch weird. On. I've like, okay. But hey, maybe that's why they're willing to work on Christmas. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> I was thinking maybe Christianity had enslaved them. Oh. Oh. That's sad. Yeah, you made it sad. I'm sorry. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Gorshin thing. Uh, it's Gorshin humor. You I forgot understand. there's an NDA sign. I, I have to take that back. It's not a Gorshin thing. <laughs> it's a normal Earthling thing. <laughs> yeah, it is, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> But no, the kid fucks everything up. They they become presents. They 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 fall into the sack. They become I presents. I mean, they're on the yeah, conveyor they belt. Get into the workshop, yeah. yeah, and they end up on this conveyor belt that's like this crazy slide right. system. It's the exact same thing out of like Toy Story and right. out of out of Monsters Inc. And like, yeah, yeah, but like theirs because of the quote unquote photorealism. Yeah, like yeah. You, you could see how sharp it was. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, ah. Yeah. I, I was like legit worried about these kids and Which is they, good Yeah, that is good, you're right yeah. And they <laughs> end up in Santa Sack Which sounds really strange as an adult I mean, not even like it. They were just a top, you know They were perched upon Santa Sack <laughs> They were perched upon Santa yeah. Sack And there they find Touching the know-it-all it. kid Who had gotten lost all by himself Yeah, that's right uh, And he's like, I'm looking for my present I know it's in here I'm gonna get it <laughs> yeah, and because he's um, impatient, he's very impatient, and <clears throat> they do find Billy's gift. Oh, that's how they got on that conveyor belt. That's right. Yeah. They saw Billy's gift. Yeah, he went running for it. <laughs> yeah, I remember they just like grabbed it and died. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fell on the conveyor. I don't remember that. That was hilarious. I love that scene. So after that, the uh, elves, the uh, like, like super. Uh, 
helicopter paragliding yeah, yeah. team, the stunt team, they grab the sack and they helicopter it out to the main square where the sleigh and the reindeer are. And as they're doing that, they knock over the star on the oh, Christmas yeah. tree. Yeah. And they almost rip the sack. And then, like, uh, almost kill someone. Yeah, I almost kill what? How they get like an inch away? Well, you know, with the scale, it's probably like a quarter in it. Yeah, yeah. For They're like real. right, oh, right next to the face of another elf. These six or five elves, whatever. Oh my God, Grab yeah. the star and pull it back up. And it's, it seems like it's all part of the show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but my wife is like, why didn't they go around the tree? I know, right? <laughs> or like. Like, it was all part of the why show? weren't they way higher than that before? Yeah, and I was like, yeah, it's because it's all part of the show, but they had to almost like, kill that elf. Yeah, the guy <laughs> almost died. It's really bad, man. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It is. It is a very funny and and weirdly hard to understand scene, like because it's like I, it's not forthright what's going on right because like it, 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 i very much had the exact same thing where i was like jesus christ like what the hell is happening yeah. and i was like was that part of the show like yeah. it doesn't feel like it it doesn't feel it, like yeah. it but they pulled it off like yeah it was. exactly yeah and it, but it, yeah it's, that's a lot of this whole movie is like it, it doesn't get the tone across right it does make it seem more dreamlike though it, that's true but there's so many moments where i don't understand uh, like where where the evil dark version of me in my mind when mm-hmm. I'm watching this movie is like, did this kid just get kidnapped by some child molesters? <laughs> oh no! Like, and he's just like dissociating the well, whole. It's like thing. Yeah, when when he takes when he takes Hero Girl, <coughs> and Tom Hanks is like, all right, Hero Girl, you don't have a ticket. Come with me to the back of the train. Oh, God. And then it's just like, what the fuck's happening? Like, is this like, is this a good thing? Like, yeah, like, there is an ominous tone. To yeah, it, and maybe that comes from the uncanny animation. Yeah, I don't like, know. It's just hard to get the cues from yeah. the characters. Or I, I think it really, I think it really does make it difficult because there's so many moments in this in this whole film where I'm just where I feel that where I'm just like I don't know what's expected of me the viewer here yeah you know it's like i'm, I'm slightly disturbed i want to laugh i want to enjoy it because it is enjoyable yeah. but i'm just confused there are some scenes that are actually pretty too yeah there are yeah. like uh the snow i think they did a good job on the snow and you know working the nutcracker i'm, I'm a sucker for a snow scene <laughs> jesus <laughs> i don't really honestly remember the snow much uh it's just I don't know. Man. I'm sure it's not that hard to animate. But yeah. I thought it, they it looked it, real. It, the the depth felt real yeah. is what it That's was. Fair. Yeah. That's fair. Are we? Uh, I don't know. Let's see here. It's it's pushing it, man. It's, we, it's a very short deep dive. But... It is a short deep dive, but it's not an extremely long movie. Yeah. It, well, actually, I think it's exactly two hours. Um, <laughs> was it that long? I think it might have been. Uh, 140. One, an hour 40. An hour 40. Never mind. Very close, though. Well, it's still, still long. It, it, it's still long for, for kids what film. happened in the movie. I think it is still long. Yeah. You're right. Uh, well, movie. we didn't quite talk about the bell. So if, if there's something to talk about that's like the message of this movie, uh, the symbol of this movie, mm-hmm. it is the bell. So this bell pops off of Santa's sleigh. When the deer are going uh, nuts, and for some reason the hero boy can't hear the bells, yeah, <laughs> just does not hear them, and uh, he picks it up off the ground. He's like shaking it in his ear, can't hear it. Then he sees Santa Jesus, and then he believes. <gasps> oh my God! Yeah, it's there, much easier to believe something when else. In front of it's you. not really. This it's something else happened. It's not just the scene is believing because that's yeah. part of the message too. Is that like you don't always get to see, but you yeah. have to you have to keep your faith. So yeah, eventually he can hear the bell, and uh, he when he and the kids grow up, they can all hear the bell. But when they grow up, they can't. But he still can. Yeah. Um, he still believes. Still believes in Santa. Tom Hanks still believes in Santa. That is the real moral yeah. of the story. It's nice, man. Yeah. It is beautiful. I had a kid come up to me at, at my full-time job today at the bank, 
and he was with his grandma, and he was talking nonstop about Santa Claus uh-huh. and about what he wanted for Christmas and about how Santa Claus might reach the bank because we have a Christmas tree up in our lobby. Uh-huh. And he was just like, how would he even get in here? There's no, there's no chimney or anything. Me, 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 I, I just barely could, could barely hear the kid. Uh-huh. And, like, it was taking me a while to process everything because I was trying to hear through all the sounds that are going on. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really have a good comeback, but the mom was just like, oh, I'm sure he just comes in through the front door. They probably keep it unlocked for him. I'm just like, oh, man, he nailed it. That was beautiful. That's good, good response. Good, good response. response, mom. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> I, I was like, I could have come in with something, but, like, I was just so busy trying to do my job. And understand at all what the fucking kid was saying because he had kid voice and yeah, I, I can't interpret kid voice sometimes. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Speaking of kid voice, I've also been watching this anime, and one of the main characters got turned into a little boy, and so it was a different voice actor, and I, and it's a voice actor that I recognize that plays a lot of kids, okay. but I don't know them by voice. Oh, no. So it was really strange for me because I'm pretty sure they're also a woman. Like, <laughs> it's like... It's like a Tommy Pickles kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I just... I don't know why you made me think of that. <laughs> Kid voice. That's We're padding, I, just like this film. Padding. There was some padding in this there film. Was some Let's padding. do some closing statements. Honestly, it's creepy, it's unnerving, but I really do enjoy it. Like, <laughs> I have a soft spot for dreams, too. So, like, that's a nice thing, is, like, watching it from that perspective, thinking on that, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Oh, that's good. Um, I recall you, <laughs> Gage, when, when they came up and said that that was your suggestion, I'm pretty sure one of the words they used was uh, god-awful, and the other one was ugly. <laughs> to describe the movie i mean that was like that's my opinion of it before <laughs> before i rewatched it because as a kid i'd only watched it once and that exactly zelda i don't know if, i don't know if she was heard on the mic but the, she, exactly it's, it's very like god awful and ugly i'm sorry Gage. <laughs> but but rewatching it as an adult rewatching it now i enjoyed it a lot more yeah i i did find find it more amusing i hated the kid yeah. the hero boy is, is such a dumb fucking kid like he bothers me so much and it's kind of enjoyable to watch him fuck up so much oh, yeah. uh, but it's not enjoyable to see him get like reap the rewards though it's it's like a I, i've complained about it a lot but 2012 you know john cusack when he right. he, he causes the he incident at the end and then he's a hero. Yeah, he almost kills a million people and, but, but but because he sit, fixes his mistakes they build a statue of him and they declare him a fucking hero and all that kind of <laughs> shit and it's just like no he's not a hero he fixes his mistake he did the bare minimum <laughs> to fix his moral fucking sin it was really hard what he did he should have sac- if he if he had sacrificed himself to do so sure then he's a hero but he survived and he can walk back and be like okay guys i almost killed us and everybody be like okay but you fixed it so thanks we're good we're clear they don't have to be like, oh, thank you so fucking much. He gave him so much anxiety and post traumatic stress, and like, <laughs> there's so much that went on there. Anyways, you have oh, that with boy. you have that a bit with this movie where the kid's a bit of a fucking idiot and fucks everything up. But then at yeah. the end, he gets the rewards, and it's just like, oh, you didn't deserve the president, you you fucking asshole with your <laughs> your hole in your sweater and everything. But okay, he does as well as hero girl they do go to save billy that's true yeah and, and the, the whole time and they're they trying billy. to include billy yeah. and they keep so billy. They're being good yeah. good kids they keep him from uh, being sinful too by by all keeping him from opening his present because that's he, right he almost does dip into yeah. greed he and they're just like no yeah no, don't do it yeah there's definitely a lot of allegory did you already give it your star rating three stars okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's definitely a lot of like uh religious allegories in this film which yeah. you know it is a christmas movie yeah. which is technically a religious holiday mm-hmm. um but they mixed the commercial in with it so it's really strange to me i don't know why uh that but i i also get how it makes a good faith story yeah well, i mean it is, it is very loyal to the book i will well, say having I read the book read yeah it's it's pretty much 
I don't think they added anything, and I can't think of anything they subtracted. Like it's oh, it's pretty that's spot on. Interesting. Yeah. Well, anyways, I I I do enjoy watching it. I think that it's just a touch heavy handed yeah. on its message. The hobo is God. The hobo is God. <laughs> indeed, the God that tempts him. So, yeah, I, I give it a face. It's a it's a competent, very watchable movie. It's uh, a and fine I don't dislike film. it at all. So it's a face. But I I've been listening to our older episodes, mm-hmm. and at first I was a lot stricter. With the face system. Yeah, yeah. You I give, give a, a lot, lot of face and asses at I, all. No, no. I haven't, though, either, I don't think. You've given Lately, more. I've given more faces than half, but I've given a lot more full faces. Yeah. I haven't given very many half faces. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, you we look gotta, out. we got to bring the half faces back next bring year. Bring in the half face. That's my resolution. <laughs> Dark Leone is coming. Dark. <laughs> Dark Leone. <laughs> Here he comes. Uh, with his ultraviolet red eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, though. I mean, the rest of it's still faceless. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. ba da I that's guess that's it. the show. We did it, man. Oh, we didn't talk about the tickets, though. Like, at the end. Oh, where he brings he the... punches yeah, yeah, yeah. the rest of them. It makes and words out of them. It him. makes words. That's right. Yeah. So he... <clears throat> hero boy, that is, gets believe. And yeah. duh. Obviously, that's the whole storyline. Right. Uh, do you think do you think that the uh, conductor knew those like knew what words he was going to put in there in the very, very beginning, or did he just oh. choose two random letters and then at the end of the movie he's like he's like oh I put myself in a corner on this one what a what do I do believe oh, believe shit, yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah do I have enough uh, space always, that's always, a long word <laughs> it always comes out working for me <laughs> uh, that would be really funny but no the whole thing was rigged from the beginning uh, this is a movie about destiny it's all a dream it's all a desta dream it's all a desta dream uh, and then the the know-it-all kid got learned and he tried to man explain oh, yeah, like yeah. what was wrong with his ticket yeah and he's like it says learn and he's like sorry <laughs> he leaves it's so stupid what is he and what is he i can't remember what does he say he thought um, it said larn or something like that either uh, larn or lean and he's like lean this is lean but there's an extra letter in it or something like that <laughs> something like that yeah it's really <laughs> stupid it says it says learn and he says oh sorry about that and he leaves. <laughs> I Stupid. just remember laughing so hard when the camera pans up to Tom Hanks. He's just like, it says learn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but it got me going. Ah, oh, and uh, now we got to get going. Oh, but I wanted to say oh! one thing. I, one of the things that I thought was the stupidest thing about the movie growing up is that he get he punches out Hero Girl's ticket and it says lead. Yeah, 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 and but she's like lead. That, that was, yeah, I think that was it because that was maybe not maybe. Yeah, it. yeah, he did. There was a different bit with they the did word. the exact same thing. It, twice. it was a little bit. Well, this was a homophone, and that kid was bad at spelling. Which is stupid. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so she's like lead, and he says it also says lead, yeah. and just the those two lines stuck out in my head about this movie. For the entire, for all my life since I watched it as a kid, I don't know why. I just think it's the silliest, stupidest couple of lines. Lead, lead. It also says lead. <laughs> You're also a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, that's all I wanted to say. And that's America for you. Mm-hmm. If you can't read, you should lead. I am the <laughs> green traveler from Gorge. And I am the. Dark Leon, safe <laughs> travels, and good night. Green and Faceless on the Couch is a proud production of Fiction Works 19. Are you a fan of the show? Feel free to contact us at greenandfacelessfans at gmail.com or visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash greenandfaceless. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe or rate us on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much for listening.